my speech is actually, or my, our conversation, I'd like to split it into a sort of um, introduction of you know, why should we be talking about this at all, right? So I have why water, and the second part is what to do in water. Uh, I had, uh, I was lucky enough to listen to the first panel, and carbon was ubiquitous, right? Climate is carbon, carbon is climate. I think that messaging has been made loud and clear. Unfortunately, the climate, uh, you know, if you think of climate change like a movie, um, carbon is like the executive producer, but the lead actress is water, right? The language of climate is water. You, I think uh, one person brought up floods in Bangalore. What is that about? Water. What is climate change impact? Uh, rising seas, droughts. This is an El Nino year. You're going to get hit hard. Uh, we are going to get hit hard. Um, you know, the floods, sea level rise, glaciers melting, all of that is water. But water is the stepchild in climate, right? And uh, I've seen that time and again. I'm meeting an investor later in today afternoon, and uh, he he and I have been friends for uh, you know almost a decade now. And about five, six years ago, I said, look, I'll take a check and I'll write checks for st water startups. There was nothing, right? And I think uh, when Ganesh starts talking, you're gonna hear that, that you know, when you look at water startups, they're really like the leopard ch stepchild. I mean, it, it, it's terrible to think. And, one thing I've noticed, every climate change, startup, etc., we are here to save the world. Okay, anyway, startups have that penchant saying we're going to save the world, and these guys say, no, no, we're really, like, unlike digital AI and all, we're really going to save the world because it's climate. Anyone who's a climate tech investor knows that EV is so expensive. Like, you'll have a deck and you'll be asking for 20 crores. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's that crazy now. But... You know, when it, I know there was this talk about data in the first session, and I'm going to talk about hard numbers and soft numbers in climate, right? There are some numbers which make a lot of sense to get granular, some numbers it doesn't. But let me give you one hard number, right? Electric mobility companies in India, and you know, I'm, I know I'm, okay, let me finish what I'm going to say. Electric mobility companies in India are raising a ton of money. Right, that's the hottest segment in climate tech right now. Do you think they're really going to change the world? Do you really think they're going to stay to solve climate change? Just give me, I'll give you a hard number. The transport emissions of all of India, right, um, is less than 1% of global carbon emissions. And the uncertainty value, there was a, uh, you know, I think Ankit mentioned that these are all modeled numbers. The uncertainty value of this is you know, 8% for carbon dioxide, 25% upwards for methane and other gases. Essentially, it's a rounding error. Like in McKinsey, we used to say, it, moving the deck chairs on the Titanic, electric mobility, for all the hype, is moving the deck chairs on emission, global carbon emissions. Sorry, in, in India, right? Um, I think there are other strategic questions which may make more sense, but if you're talking climate and EV, I mean, I know I've been quite harsh. I have two EV investments. They're doing very well. But uh, it is the truth. It's, it's a good investment. It's a good investment thesis. But then let's not say it's saving the world. Uh, renewable energy, that is saving the world, right? I also run um, two small textile companies. We make yarn. We don't make a lot of money. Spinning doesn't. We're about 70% renewable now. And we, you know, we were the first textile company in the world to win the TPM award. So we're one of the most energy efficient factories in the world. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is, carbon is is happening in India, not just because of the. There's two reasons why it's happening, and both of them are important when we talk about water. One is the messaging. I think net zero has just gotten tattooed into our brains, right? It's just everywhere. You're talking, I heard a gentleman talking net zero by 2050. In textiles, we're hearing net zero by 2025, 2030 at the latest. These are what brands are asking for, right? So that's gotten tattooed into our brains and that's translating into a need for innovation, which is translating into startups. That 
Water, because it's the stepchild, is not tattooed, and I'm going to show you something, that's not tattooed in the brains. And that is, again, there's no demand, so there is no... Um, the second part I want to say is, um, India has one of the highest carbon prices in the world. If you look at what electricity prices, you know, I know, I think Karnataka just had a hike in unit rate, no? So in Tamil Nadu, I mean, we play a ridiculously high price. Industries, com commercial establishments pay a very high price for electricity, right? And the second thing is, look at the amount of taxes we pay on our fuel. That's creating a commercial business case for uh, electric mobility is happening largely because our high uh, um, diesel rates are there. But here's something. Um, can we have the first slide, please, if you don't mind? Can we have the first slide? The thing that I want to say, and I, I said it in the first book which I wrote in 2018, I think the 1.5 degrees is toast. The 1.5 degrees is not happening. I think Australia just said it's already 1.47 above uh, pre-industrial level. So I think let's forget about 1.5. So the, mo the world hasn't ended, but it's become a lot more volatile. And what I want to say, um, I just did some math before I came, and this is a hard number. Indian carbon, the India's carbon intensity of GDP is falling. So we're doing a fairly decent job on carbon, right? And the growth in India's carbon emissions in the last decade was 3% versus 4% in the last 40 years. So we're, we're, carbon is sort of under control, but water is not. This is just the damages, and I know there was insurance, and should we avoid risk, should we transfer risks? This is just from floods, landslides and storms, and I know there's going to be agri-tech, I wish I had known about it in the afternoon, but uh, this is an El Nino year, and you know, an El Nino year is like, when you're already in pain, getting poked by a pin, it's going to just add to the intensity. So I hope I've made the case of why water. If you want to save the world, if you're not talking water, you're not saving the world. Okay, so next, uh, what can you do in water? Right, about, I think, Again, these are soft numbers because nobody really knows, so I'm going to give you ballpark. 80 to 90% of India's water is used in agriculture, right? So if you want to really build India's water resilience, you have to build it in agri-tech. And uh, uh, I just looked it up. Israel did $833 million in investment in 2021-2022 in ag, food, and water. Um, I don't think India is anywhere close to that. And there are two uh, imped, no, no, can we not have this slide? This is later. Um, can we have uh, the, the problem I think everyone knows is water is free. Um, and now can we have the slide after this, please? Uh, not this one, but the next one. Next one, please. Next one. Next one. So uh, this, usually when I talk, I ask uh, people uh, to fill out a survey. I should have done it here, but I forgot. Um, but this is over about 1,000 people that I've asked now. And I said, do you think water should have a price? Most people say no, right? So how do you expect uh, people like Ganesh, there's another company I've invested in called Earth Focus, Cultivate, all of these guys who make water saving their primary goal. If it doesn't cost something. How are they going to build a business model to try and save it? Conscience, please, like let's just kick conscience out, it doesn't work. It's good to try and make a change, it's horrible to sustain a change. Okay, the, let's just go to the previous slide if we can, sorry about the thing. So this is just running costs in effluent treatment in making a t-shirt, right? And um, we had a global textile summit and I was uh, the moderator there. And we had the big brands, you know, who talk sustainability from all over the world. I said, would you pay five rupees more per t-shirt? No, no, cost is very important. So look, if you're not going to pay for it, you're not going to get it. And that's the limited point I wanted to make. Can we have the previous slide, please? This is, again, what I asked 1,000 people. What does green, eco-friendly, sustainable mean to you? Can you see water there? from 1,000 people. And self-selected audience are people who are coming to hear a climate change talk. Can you see water there? No. So if something's 
not part of the narrative and something is not priced, you're not going to get solutions. Okay, so let me just, with that, um, turn off the slides and leave this sort of for the panel to understand. I think the earlier panel, I like the way this has been arranged. The earlier panel talked of climate risk. If you're not managing water, you're not going to be managing climate risk. And I think, you know, um, we're coming, we're touching our nose like this, but oh well, you have to touch your nose. If that's the only way you can touch it, fine, that's the way you're going to have to touch it. Um, Sundaram Climate Institute, last month we just launched our report. We've spoken to about 2,000 households in Madurai over four years. And we found that the poorest, even the poorest households spent about 500 rupees a month buying water. So water does have a price, but it's really, really inefficient. And they pay like five times what a Singapore, I think three to four times, not five times, three to four times what a Singaporean household would pay. And they pay it during the summers of El Nino years. So it's like an El Nino tax, right? So there is a price. It's not apparent uh, because the price is not formal, well-planned like Israel and Singapore. You have innovation in tankers and bore wells rather than analytics and metering and leakage detectors and all that. That's unfortunately the signal that we're giving. Um, the second thing that we found is that um, uh, it's manageable and there is a hunger for it. You know, again, I said five years ago, I wanted to invest. There was nothing investable. Um, for like, you know, she said uh, 15 investments. I'm up to 25 investments. My last four have all been about water. So there is that there. Last thought I'll leave you with. Israel has created billions of daughter, uh, dollars in a water innovation startup engine. Singapore has done the same thing. One Bangalore is one Israel. You don't have to solve India's problems. If you create that startup ecosystem in Bangalore or Madras, you've got that kind of a market to deal with. Okay. And I'll leave that. And with that, I'll get to the panel. And I'm hoping this will be an interactive session. Okay. Thanks. Okay. On that note, uh, I'd like to introduce our first panelist, Ganesh Shankar, from FluxGen Technologies, whose goal is to save a billion liters of water per day. And our next panelist, if uh, you're not an old-time Bangalorean, you've probably used his service, uh, the CEO and founder of NoBroker.com, Amit Agarwal. Okay, and with that, I'll hand over back to you. So I think, you know, the last panel set us up very well. And there was a question from a young man who's left, who said, um, will you insure the flooded, yeah, uh, yeah, there you are. So, you know, would you insure the flooded regions of Bangalore? And given that, uh, you know, very, very expensive houses, I know friends whose uh, houses were ruined there. Um, how are you seeing the, water play out as a risk in the real estate state? Uh, so, uh, so I run no broker and what I see is how people include water in their decision making when they think about renting a house or buying or selling a house. And it's very interesting to see and this was something which did not occur to me earlier. Uh, but in this business I can see it very clearly. So for example, it's a mandatory field in every property listing, especially in Bangalore, where people want to know uh, whether which type of water source is there for this particular flat or society. Uh, so we have to be mandatory capture whether this is Kaveri water, corporation water, or whether this is a borewell or water tanker. Uh, and there are consumers who insist that they only want to have those flats which are Kaveri water and they are happy to pay, pay a premium for it. And the societies which do not have that, it's very difficult for them to re really get it. So it's a premium thing which is considered 
especially in the central uh, Bangalore. So that's a that's an amazing behavior to see. Uh, whether the society is having rainwater harvesting or not is also something which consumers want and basically we capture. So there is a cost uh, which you talk about uh, water which is there in consumers mind. And one of the disadvantages which consumers see uh, in terms of the borewell water or the water tanker is that that water is hard. And because the water is hard, it has an impact in terms of how the taps get clogged if they are not used. And we also basically have a service which is about bathroom cleaning. Uh, now we do multiple things. And in that, one of the key uses why consumers call us for bathroom cleaning is because of the hard water stains which come uh, into the apartments and the bathrooms. So it's very interesting to see, but subconsciously or consciously, water plays an important part when people choose homes, buy homes, and related to the price of the homes also. No, that's great. But again, I'm assuming there are potential startup founders, existing startup founders, investors. How do we convert that into a problem solution for uh, a startup to solve? Is that something that you want to take up or you want to address, Ganesh? It's a slight twist on the question, but. Uh. So I would like to answer this question, not just behalf of my company, Fluxion. I would like to answer behalf of many other startups who are doing good work, including we got Avilash as a great friend, Digital Pani, uh, uh, Green Environment, the list goes on. At least, I'm at least aware of the names. I think you should, I'll share these names as well. The thing is, uh, uh, what we all believe is, um, uh, just like water, you know, as a liquid is transparent and clear. Right. What if you make the data of water transparent and clear? Can you solve some part of uh, water crisis, if not all? Right. So we believe yes. And uh, what we feel is the uh, if you consider the problem statement around water, in especially in subcontinent, India consumes 25% uh, of world's groundwater. It's equal to some whole of China and US put together. Right. So fortunately, the government has taken a very important step. Um, uh, uh, by central government, cent central groundwater authority, which says that all groundwater extraction should be monitored. You have to pay for it, and you have to reduce the consumption by minimum 20% in two years, right? And so that's already a tech component plugged into it, where you have to do. So the point of responsible consumption doesn't come with, like as you said, conscience doesn't work. <laughs> So I think that way, uh, in fact, we got is doing a great work in many apartments uh, where they're putting up these meters and things like that. So I think uh, uh, this, if you, w the moment you actually track consumption, you can build solution on top of it. It's just not only measuring, right? You put analytics and you build various other services around it. I'm sure uh, if I'm taking a, uh, 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 this on metro ride, someday I want to end cash from the water conservation I'm doing. Some models that you can, I'm just trying to say the uh, array of solutions that you can build once you have this data transparent and clear. You can actually drive uh, sustainability at large, right? So uh, for example, Digital Pani is doing a great job in uh, water treatment, right? They are able to help ensure that your water treatment facility is running well. Uh, and uh, if you ask me today, many times we, uh, in apartments, they don't even know whether their water treatment is even producing, uh, I mean, producing the water that is consumable. So, and uh, they blindly put it across the w water for your gardening and things like that. But that water can be utilized for, say, construction purpose, right? I mean, today, construction, actually, Bangalore shut down construction for almost a few months when there was a crisis, right? So. But on the other hand, digital technologies can enable you to use this treated water for uh, somebody who is constructing so that you can avoid groundwater uh, consumption. So a kind of a marketplace enablement can be done once you start digitizing water. So that is only a start of everything. Digitization by itself will not solve the problem. So if uh, Ganesh, if I can just uh, <coughs> think, you've given you're a hungry man, <laughs> right? You have a problem and mm -hmm. thing, and you've come up with a menu of options. Yeah. Uh, one of them is this whole measurement and analytics to understand where you're consuming and where you can cut down, uh, something to manage your sewage treatment. Which parts of your hunger are not met today? You mean in terms of 
in in terms of water like you have a problem you know your bathroom stains because of hard water your taps clogged because of hard water like you know what are the pain areas in water which is not met by solutions today because so that can be ideas for someone to start up so i think what we observe is how the disparity is there among different societies in terms of solving okay. this so that is what we are observing so i don't have the direct answer to what you are asking so for example we run also no broker hood which is there in 10 12000 societies and uh, earlier what i basically used to see was the way in which you were mentioning about ev is everybody approaching different ev guys approaching us for charging stations in the no broker hood societies so that is all that basically we used to get then we got we got so we got approached us and then i also basically i'm an angel investor and we got uh for the first time it has happened is that societies are now opening up and talking about how the the way in which you are mentioning how water can be at least digitized known mm -hmm. because uh, so this is not a problem which is which i would say is known how to solve it but still unsolved is how much water you are consuming and the day the way in which you were showing it in your slide that nobody is ready to pay for water but we are paying for water in bangalore everybody each one of us is paying for water but we do not know how much we are paying or even if we know it is democratic the interesting thing is bangalore apartments apartment dwellers as a percentage of monthly income pay one of the lowest shares of monthly income for water i mean and i'm not comparing you to israel or singapore or anything i'm comparing you to you know uh, developing cities in uh, africa in south america i mean bangalore bangalore apartment dwellers i'm not talking about informal settlements so that may be one thing so i would say that the instead of basically perhaps taking some unsolvable problem and aiming towards it there are obvious solutions easy solutions which are prevalent in some of the societies more needs to be done to basically no help people conserve the water which is coming for example as i said rain water harvesting many societies still are not very serious about it but the it's so obvious how much the gain is because whichever society is doing it is gaining hugely and about the smart metering and digitization and water which you were saying so uh, ganesh let me come to this question right um, there are more are we done <laughs> sorry we have time right okay um, why are there not thousand more companies like you? like if you i'm i'm quite serious and i've written it in two books that if you want to do something about climate you have to solve water right why are they not india is the most vulnerable country to climate change why are there not thousand more uh, flux gens i can take a personal journey on this question is that okay it might be a little longer answer to your question <laughs> bear with me so, so please highlight yeah. problems you know that other entrepreneurs who are thinking of getting into the space will encounter yeah yeah so something of my journey you they will be able to see so uh, 2010 i left my job in g to pursue a career vision on making sustainability the default choice and uh, fortunately a professor of mine from isc connected me to dr arish adde and i worked in a company called selco for a uh, duration of time so when i was entering that company solar total solar capacity in the whole country was less than 5 uh, megawatt and uh, i was also talking uh, talking to him uh, i was understanding something called microfinancing at that time so everybody is oh is in that impact space i mean like is working on impact i mean like has <laughs> a bit but what i have seen in last 14 13 years from then to now is that um, what is impact is a mainstream in the future like today you got so much of climb i mean fintech investment what was considered as uh, impact has now become a mainstream thing solar also has had its own share of success so i wouldn't say water will not have 1000 startups or so i would say it will happen but i'll tell my journey in this so fortunately uh, working in climate change mitigation the first part of my journey i was working solar installation and uh, working and realized there is this solar installation itself has a problem there's, n there's so much of issues that it's becoming unpopular so fact that i fact that i was in a digital tech all through my career previously i decided why don't we digitize uh, solar and enable them to know how to make it reliable and uh, use it use so in no time as the solar picked up this field also picked up and um, i spun off a company which would use drone analytics for solar asset management and 
people again used to saying this guy is in solar like this is a sol clean clean tech bubble that was burst in 2010 right i mean the foolish decision to get into something at that time but it so happened that we uh, were able to help big companies like tata solar acme softbank energy and others across india and went across three other continents and this company was even acquired by a san francisco based company so i saw something which was totally discouraged uh, when i started and the sort is not going to work out to see how it scaled and eventually today we have many solar unicorns also across the globe i guess so what i when i was in solar i also had a great conversation with some very knowledge like professor jay shrinivas and he used to always tell me ganesh uh, you know this is the problem of uh, mitigation is one but the adaptation is always a step child or something like that and fortunately i got that exposure under guidance like him and of course i have been in touch with you uh, since then he introduced so so unfortunately people don't see the problem of water first hand and you need somebody like uh, professor jay shrinivas or murula murudula to tell this it's not so live so i think that's first reason so people think uh, as you know they you put the number right that the cost of water is so less that people don't even want to invest but what is very important is that the risk associated to water is very high so in my earlier childhood we had a well at home and that dried out by the time i went to school at that time uh, fortunately we got tap connection but uh, we it was not frequent for my, my father constructed over a tank at home by the time i went to my pre, uh, middle school you also had to contact construct a sump because water was not filling the over a tank and then when i went to my college uh, and masters at indian institute of science he had to construct one more tank so it, the water became so infrequent so now if you consider uh, within my own lifetime so water has depleted to the extent that my father had to do lot of uh, Uh, mitigation to so if you go with this trend in mind the availability of water is will be so less that uh, i'll be concerned when i send my son to school well he will not return back home because of the violence he might be caught because of the water crisis so i just jump in here see the where india is <laughs> is about 20 years behind where syria was okay uh, one of the reasons that sparked the syrian crisis is because it had a terrible drought and the per capita availability of india is following syria's track beautifully and we are about 20 years behind yeah so the risk is the cost i mean uh, i heard a gentleman talking about your insurance is like a transferring the risk right but we can actually mitigate so that's where the water tech startups come into picture uh, i i mean i know eco stp is doing a great work in water treatment but how many people know about uh, tarun i don't know <laughs> but he should be known right so i think we need more success stories of water to pa- start people seeing that the water is the next ev <laughs> if i could use <laughs> right so the the thing is uh, the f- fact that uh, the c- there is going to be multiple Uh, issues for our country's growth whether in terms of gdp or things then the policies will obviously be rolling out to make sure that uh, water is prioritized and i think government has done a good job in having 75 startups recognized under amrit 2.0 uh, have given grant money and they are even even given to various other uh, the merit, uh, merit should be given where the, the work is done right so i think that's the work is already started in that regard that uh, niti aayog came up with a report uh, that uh, 21 indian cities is going to run out of ground water and various other aspects 75% of water is contaminated the next thing that they did was actually of course we had a jal shakti i mean water ministry after 70 years of independence now from uh, having a separate ministry there is all this uh, uh, programs to enable water stewardship through startups and various other program where government can work with startup I think the time has come. So I believe there will be thousand startups, and I think Amir should invest more on more we gots uh, in the future. Uh, the the so yeah let yeah. Me, let me. Uh, I'll just add to this. Yeah. So if I could take a slightly contrarian approach to what basically you said earlier, so I think it is not that people do not know the value of water. They, but when you ask a group of thousand people in this thing in a slide the way in which you have done. i think people don't associate people associate climate and earth with pollution and hence the term water does not come into their mind so i am not sure whether i agree that water is not top of the mind or n- not at least among the top 10 items i think it is also about the framing of the question why i am saying this is that 
in all the societies that we manage no brokerhood and because we also have a maintenance uh, property bill generation module so we are aware as to how much each society is spending to the water for the water because we generate those bills and you will be surprised that no matter which society you go to uh, minimum 15 percentage is the cost of our maintenance bill that is going to water and that is only for the large societies which have thousand flats if you go to smaller flat society it is up to 35 percentage so what we are paying 35 percentage is basically to water and uh, alluding to the question which you said that why there are no no uh, why there why aren't there so many water startups so i am not the expert but perhaps the hesitation is for example even with the we got conversation when this angel investing was happening somebody showed to me that this is the government's regulation and smart metering and individual metering is compulsory but that tangling question is will government really push it so there is a lot of regulation uh, danger uncertainty why nobody wants to fund water startups what if we basically spend our career pushing this agenda and then government comes and says it is free or you just <laughs> or just basically washes it with one pen stroke that's a huge problem yeah. right um so i'm actually going to ask you know um, in again in the same study that we did with the 2000 households during an el nino year okay when people were getting water once in four days we went and asked them would water be influence your voting decision we didn't ask the question that way we went and asked what do you vote on do you vote on money do you vote on caste do you vote on religion candidate whatever and we had water also in the list the short answer is people don't vote on water right when people don't vote on water you're not going to get policies you know your regulation risk is very real so how would you tackle that but is it because people don't care about water or is it because between the two parties both the parties are going to take the same view about water and hence which is that okay will which so the opening statement for every political party would be we will make sure that water is there so is water not a issue because everybody is promising the same thing that is different from saying that water doesn't matter to people no no they are, they are saying when no we, i'm i'm sort of simplifying it people said i'll you know we asked a question saying uh, i'll say it i don't anyone speak tamil here yeah okay enough people so i'll say it in tamil first so my uh, the researcher asked ninga payanukku seat vaangnaona ninga vote poduvingla indha konja panam kudutha vote poduvingla illana thanni connection kudutha vote poduvingla thanniya manage panna vote poduvingla en payanukku seat kudutha vote potruvanga sir that was the that was the, you know the, the short answer is uh, they and uh, we didn't ask it that way we uh, we did probe that question and i'm simplifying it down um so actually have a yeah. point as yeah. why we chose industrial water over the exact debate that is happening right now right so what we realized is we want to solve the problem of water so who is going to pay for it so that's why we decided that we'll focus on industry ot to start with so fortunately titan jewelry division was a foolish company but very good company they gave us the order but i'm very thankful to them i just called recently uh, murli sir well, after prime minister called out us in recent month ki baat i just called sir you are very hopeful about us delivering what order you gave for 3 months we ended up doing it in 9 months and you still supported us so the the sense i say is foolish is that he was confident he he knew that there is this is important these guys are struggling they don't have no idea how to build it but he just met us in an event and he gave us the order what happened then was we learned from him so uh, how to build it he was a he's a maintenance head of uh, titan jewelry division he he understood the problem first hand he knew the problem and he knew why digitization was important and he knew why industries will face this problem he was a so he is a real entrepreneur to me than me so what we did was we decided to focus on industries which consume huge amount of water and pay a lot for their entire water cost which include the cost of getting procuring water the indirect cost which is chilling boiling pumping purification which is 10x to 50x the cost of water the treatment cost which can be 2x to 3x or 5x the cost of water so we understood the problem entirely by just working with titan jewelry division and no, then we this is decided really to for no really important that's why i just want to bring him in see israel wouldn't be where it was in terms of water if <coughs> macaron wasn't a very supportive customer who i think earlier people said co creating what can an organization like you do and i'll sort of turn it over after that 
to help co-create solutions with startups because you've got the problem you've got a huge customer base so i think the thing that we can do is give access to startups companies to our customers to our customers who are basically either online or who are sitting in physical societies in no brokerhood give access to these startups to these management committees because it takes years to make a network of 10000 plus physical societies with some 25 lakh flats across the metros which consume a large portion of water so that is basically what we can do and uh, so startups with their innovative solutions can approach us and we'll be very happy to help them simple i was talking to somebody yesterday and they were saying that in their society rain water harvesting is basically used very very properly good channels and because of that they had a bo bore well earlier which dries in summer months but now this bore well and this rain water harvesting filtered pit are close to each other and in such a way that is porous the pit and it recharges the bore well and their need for water tanker is almost close to zero because of this solution so anyone who wants to basically do it we are happy to give those access to basically promote the solution that's that's great that's the need of the hour so with that i'm going to turn it over for questions that you have thank you uh, madam uh, i think the context what you put together i think yeah everybody talks about carbon but water is life without water we cannot think of life uh so from that perspective water is uh, crucial but uh, nobody cares about it uh so i think you know we have to act at different levels the policy and at the ground and i i think at uh, a kind of people's movement uh water is free nobody cares about the water nobody conserve our water uh so i think uh, we need to think about can and 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 india i mean talk about agriculture and you said 82% or something is used for for agriculture and agriculture is a state subject so there is no regulation uh, at the central level the israel example what you mentioned i think uh, what is the question if i may ask sorry the question the question is how to put a regulation mechanism can we make water as a national property i'll i'll let no <laughs> then it's very difficult to solve the problem this water act of india already uh, but the enforcement is a problem i feel not the regulation there are regulations i mean enough regulation the real question is uh, like if you consider pollution control board uh, should actually be tracking water quality at all the stp No, but today I think there's a you have to take, you know this a, with respect to this particular thing. Today you have every organization has to go to CGW and get a new this one. A, a, uh, I mean they have to get a new certificate to have a bore well. So I don't think from the regulation point of view you can't give that there is no subsidy anymore in my opinion. I mean. Uh, let me just no, but uh. let me give you what gives me hope and where I've come from is an organization like yours with ten thousand. for market to get innovation going you don't need all of india yeah but 80% 80 plus percent you can solve it one you slowly slowly quickly so no as i think gurila uh, said earlier also agriculture consumes significant amount of water i think uh, malle should have been yeah, uh, next cultivate <laughs> actually i wanted to mention see one of the companies have invested in cultivate which is run by a guy called malesh worked with punjabi farmers to get them to con uh, cut down their water consumption he didn't tell them oh conscience oh water you're running out and all that he said if you cut down water your yield will go up and you need less fertilizer where in punjab i've been working in punjab also so i'll introduce you uh, to malesh so i'd be better job pitching your startups huh? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think uh, we have to understand what is a small enough to do big enough to matter right i think i think that's what i think you are mentioning in your earlier pitch that, that's a nice playground to get started on that topic yeah. okay. okay so we have one more question here from the audience and then we'll go to the 
we have lot of apartments but then the problem is like uh, i mean uh, uh, for example the water treat the sewage treatment plant uh, when you want to recycle some authentic information but uh, none of the none of the uh, stp plants met the bod discharge levels i was told in in bangalore in where we have some problems okay uh, this is not not even one the uh, the court asked this question and i i mean i i, I don't have an authentic information but it's here say so are we not educating what kind of a stp should be there because it's it's nice to talk about startups and all that but uh, for apartment owner he he runs to office every day he manages his business he does not have time to look at the stp plan and in a society there is nobody knowledgeable to assess evaluate i mean it's a big problem because i am facing this problem in apartment when i am trying to do a weather proofing okay and stp is even worse so how do we resolve this problem how do we educate the apartment owners about how nicely you can treat the stp water i mean that's that's a so primary you've got thing. tarun no no you've got i you got tarun here who's running stp and i think you guys should talk but the whole problem is that see again you know ganesh is very optimistic and he needs to be to be a you know uh, entrepreneur in startups but i think uh, you know you made the point that regulation is not equal because we don't pay enough for our water and we don't pay enough uh in terms of investing in the pollution control board they don't have enough boots on the ground to go make the audits that would make the regulation actually matter right so the bigger apartments who are likely to get audited will probably you know they the all the audits that happen happen in industries so that's why ganesh has very cleverly gone and the thing because you know if this is the priority drinking water farmers industry industry will always get shut down so great on targeting but um i will let you guys talk unless you yeah, want to make i, I have one uh, more thing i'm just uh, there's I, another I, question I, that's why i'm i'll have to ask one more thing and we are promoting bioethanol so much and sugarcane is such a crop which consumes so much of water bioethanol the main source is from sugarcane farmers vote more lasses so, i mean that's a separate topic but i, I mean now is that rain water harvesting doing that in apartments is compulsory to get a completion certificate an occupancy certificate so at least in the checklist unless you have rainwater harvesting in your uh, society you cannot get a oc or cc yeah. <laughs> we have two more questions tarun if you don't mind yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and anyone else who has sewage related questions just one very good technology yeah good afternoon uh, madam i'm uh, i should thank you for uh, your book uh, which i'm i'm a basically a scientist and inventor i'm using your uh, Uh, concept of uh, 100 hours is the time all the rain falls within uh, an year and my invention relates to uh, storing water in the sea since fresh water is lighter than sea water it floats so we can store large volumes of uh, water in the sea and i have a patent on that actually so now uh, when you say 100 hours uh, where do you store the water we need to uh, we need large volumes to be stored in uh, uh, tmc and uh, that's why we had lakes all no. over our cities to store <laughs> no, no, that no lakes water. yeah bangalore lake, thousand lakes <laughs> no la lake lake, lake volume is uh, less i'll uh, no, show you the calculation had, i mean if you look at the lakes of india and that's what our study is really about the tanks no you take uh, western ghats one uh, there is 2000 tmc flowing uh, there is no place to store uh, 2000 to 3000 uh, tmc rainfall which falls within a very short duration of time and that can all be stored in the sea and transport on the sea uh, using a system which i have developed there's a slight problem there i'm not you know that much of an expert but i'll ha. say one thing the problem of fresh water storing in the sea so hmm. the bay of bengal has a huge layer of fresh water on it because the ganga the Correct. brahmaputra all deposits this and that's why it it rises no it gets much, mixed up so much more cyclones so you know you store no actually uh, i'll uh, explain to you if i get a time with you uh, we have two more questions and then yeah. we'll move on thank you very much thank you thank you I mean, the answer is obviously yes, but the <laughs> implement. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I can also build a unicorn like him.
One aspect I see is if government starts realizing that um, uh, investment might actually get affected. I mean, at the end of the day, all decision in the world goes with more of economics than ecology, unfortunately. The eco part, though, it is common. No, no, oats, of course, but at the end, uh, you also need uh, people to pay tax, right? I mean, to run the com country. So I think if the investment decisions are affecting significantly, I think there will be policy done that would, whether it's foreign direct investment or internal investment, whichever way. I think that way uh, government would actually take. So we have to drive agenda where there's incentive to everybody. Right? I think uh, I'm not a policy guy, but uh, I would. See, I would the, the reason why I keep saying this is one Bangalore is one Israel. Don't try to conquer India. Try, I mean, all of, all of, this is Bangalore, right? Use the floods. There's going to be water shortage this year. It's an El Nino year. Use this to talk in your neighborhood, your flat. That's enough, right? I, it's something I feel, I've seen change happen so fast in the last 10 years. It's slowly, slowly, and then very quickly. Like, look at EV. It was a joke, a non-existence three or four years ago. Today, they to I mean, they're talking about 100% uh, electrification of two-wheelers. Also, because I think the lot of, I mean, you would know because you're from the TVS family that a lot of uh, 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 incumbent uh, internal combustion engine guys went to the government and said that if you can't make this EV policy, it's going to hurt. But the Niti Aarav just said, we have made this policy, we request you to support us. They clearly, I mean, whether it's Amitabh Kant or somebody, they clearly told the policy is done, we want this to be this way. No, I, but uh, <laughs> Oh, that's true. I mean, there's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Underestimate what cool and sexy is very, very important. Okay, and uh, I was in the talk. No, but the richest man in China is a water entrepreneur. China is rich, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's not really good for India. But uh, anyway, any other questions? Yeah, I, just my last question. See, at the start of the talk, you mentioned, um, uh, I, I, you know, the concept of net uh, zero, was that it, that you mentioned? Net zero for carbon, right? You see most of the brands understand net zero and and they commit to net zero uh, policies and so on. Uh, is there something, and you know, you mentioned whether the, there's a price that could be put, like you have a put, put a price on carbon. Is there a way to put a price on water? So there is a system of carbon credits that has existed, whether for compliance or for voluntary uh, purposes for the 30 plus years now. Let's assume that the compliance part is not going to come for water, but why has it been so difficult to think of, you know, voluntary water credits where brands can commit to being net water zero, net water positive? Yeah, I think you, we were discussing. Uh, uh, even I think I had this discussion with Malesh also on how you actually come up with the water credits, right? And uh, Yeah, I think, and also water credit is very complicated because water is a, the water value in Jaisalmer is very different from Chirapunji, right? I mean, but on the other hand, probably electricity is almost same. You can say the uh, value of electricity. So it, it, it requires a lot more uh, intense analytical and approach on how do you, 
say if you're saving water in this place and the equivalent credit to it in another place and normalize the math on it. So by the time people understand it, I don't know. <laughs> no, but still, you see. I mean, we have a very carbon tunnel vision, like as Mridula said. Today, actually, to be honest, we don't even know what water we get, right? But we, in, I mean, the kind of water we get, we have no clue, visibility about it. But when you're getting from rainwater and you're treating within your facility and we have diffi difficulty in using that water, that myth has to be broken that uh, we just believe that water we get from, I'm, I'm not complaining anybody, but uh, the, uh, I mean, off-gridding of water at all levels. In fact, our narrative for, I mean, since I'm, uh, my uh, narrative for plugs is also saying that we want to help uh, industries become completely water positive, not ever depend. And there's a stack that we are trying to build, working with people like, hopefully with people like Tarun and Rainwater Harvesting guys and everybody come on our platform. <laughs> and hopefully Sundram Textile is one of our first <laughs> customers. <laughs> Any more questions? I think we're good. Okay, yeah, thank you so much for such a insightful panel. Great discussions. Good questions as well.